is Dalton Connect due for a big game? He has been eh in the past four games for Tennessee. I'm not knocking him in that Kentucky game. He scored, I believe, 39 points. But let's be frank, a lot of them were garbage time because I didn't think Tennessee wanted to be there. He has gone on to be a good player. He hasn't been needed to be a superstar, so I'm not knocking anything from this point in the retro, as the kids like to say. But in the future, as the kids like to say as well, um, is Dalton Connect due for a big game? And I'll lump that together with John. Does he have to score 30 points at some point with four games remaining in the tournament for Tennessee to win it all? Do they need a big Dalton Connect game or are they just good all around? No, they need a big Dalton Connect game. And that's one reason I think they can beat Creighton. It's the biggest reason. Not only is he due for a big game, but uh, going back through Creighton's season, uh, it lost twice to uh, Providence. And Providence's two big scores combined for 99 points in those games. In the loss to Providence, their leading score, I mean, in the loss to St. John's, uh, Creighton's loss to St. John's, their top score got 27 points. So there's a bit of a track record there where teams have been able to score uh, their their top players have scored well against Creighton. And you go back to the game, Creighton managed to survive. Uh, Jermaine Cousinard, uh, I think, had 32 for Oregon. Uh, so I think Dalton Connect is due for a big game, and I think he's going to have one against Creighton, and I think Tennessee will need that. Kayton, or Caleb, look at our guy. John, not just bringing his opinion, but bringing some big-time stats to the program. Hey now. All right. Let me ask you, let me ask you, Caleb Calhoun. Hey now, hey now. Let me ask you, Caleb, uh, do you think that uh, Dalton Connect is due for a big game? Does he have to score 30 at one point? Or does he have to be the man, whatever it is, 30, 35, 40, in one of these games to say, hey, dudes, we're winning the natty. My name's Tennessee. Let's rock and roll, baby. Well... I got to take the likelihood of this. Would Dalton really have a chance to do it if John didn't say he had a chance to do it? I mean, this is the John Adams that for the longest time, the Knoxville Fired Philip Fulmer. Fired Philip Fulmer. Yeah, people just thought you hated Tennessee, John. Yeah, John. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, when I was writing really, really critical pieces of Tennessee, you have to remember what the state of the program was in the – the state of the university leadership was. It was Fappy. You know, Fappy means John. Wait. You know, y'all don't, Dave, John you don't want to say that term. You don't want to say that term because you guys look up what that term means. I cannot believe Dave just said that. It was fat and happy. It's wrong with being fat and happy. You, you that's you, not what you, that means. Yeah, that's, that's what, what it means. That means Dave. You're, sitting, no, you're sitting on a national championship. You're fat and happy. That's the term. That's what it means here. All right, Caleb, what were you going to ask John there? Um, all I was saying was that, no, I think Dalton Connect is due for a big game too. John, I was going to ask you, I talked about this yesterday because I was trying to think about this from an X's and O's standpoint. Creighton has one seven footer to defend the paint. And I think Jonas Adu, I, people can hate me on this. I think he's too soft to go up against really elite seven footers. He's shown that to me all year. Um, so do you think Tennessee should rely on the three point shot or the mid range with Dalton Connect to win this game? It's got to be his choice, isn't it? Uh, well, I mean, I think he can. If you go back to Kusnard, uh, again, using him as an example this past weekend, he scored from everywhere. And, and I think that's maybe what what Connect can do against this defense. Um, the I'm not creating seven-footer. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know that he's an elite seven footer. I know he's got good numbers, and I haven't watched Creighton play. I saw him in that game, and I hadn't watched them play before the tournament. I just seen snippets of their play, so maybe I'm underrating him. But I agree with what you say about a dude. I think an elite center, i.e., a Zach Eady, he he's not up for that. But 
maybe against Creighton he is. You've probably seen Creighton more. You probably can better answer that better than I can. Well, I just know that the center has like 30 pounds on Adu, and I think that's what kind of I, – I think the key for Adu would have to be he'd have to pull him away from the basket by hitting like those like 10, 15 footers. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And, yeah, he's, he's done that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And, and 82 – for those that haven't seen him or only basketball fans in college, I mean, he is like a throw or during the NCAA tournament. Our only, I mean, he is a throwback player in every sense of the word. That guy's more Kevin McHale than Victor Wampamiyama, uh, John. I mean, it's just not, it's, he's a different old school type of basketball player for those yeah. that haven't seen him. And he's that dude. Yeah, he's what seven footers used to be. I mean, they, right. they set up in the post. One thing that's impressed me about him is, Nick, the way he moves. I mean, he's not just a big dude in there. He he, he, he knows how to play the game inside. He's very good, and he's just going to cause a world of problems. If Tennessee reaches that point, he will cause a world of problems for them. Yeah, you don't want to be in a situation – where you're down six points late because he's going to be able to manufacture two points and two points and two points and two points. And then suddenly you're, you're going to be, instead of down six minutes late with eight minutes left, you're going to be down six points with two minutes left. Ray Varner, uh, local you can trust innovations that you can afford. I want to remind you that Rick Terry Jewelry Design is nice enough to provide our fire opals for our celebrity bracket challenge. John, one of four people in the tournament who is already mathematically eliminated. So for those of you that don't think John does a great job on picking games or covering sports in general, that provides you some fodder. But with Rick Terry Jewelry Design, uh, they want to be your jeweler, affordable game day jewelry. How about the Fire Opals, the Tennessee tradition, rickterryjewelry.com, rickterryjewelry.com. The thing that scares, I think, Tennessee fans are should about Edie is that would be the second game of the weekend, John. And it's not like the triple option in football, but with Purdue, you have to make some pretty significant adjustments, especially offensively. That being said, I feel like they have kind of a poor man's Purdue in, uh, in uh, who uh, Creighton. Do you not? Yeah, that that's a good way to put it. And, Maybe it had to do with my television. I didn't think Creighton Center was as as heavy as as uh, Caleb said he was. He just didn't look as heavy. He does look heavier than they do, though. Can I see uh, if I can? Can I go ahead and see if I can pull up a picture of him so those uh, know that exactly who we're talking about? Let's see. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, and he is actually uh, the one <laughs> the one on the left. So that's oh, uh, okay. Yeah, he's definitely bigger. Mm -hmm. than I thought he was on first view. Yeah, he is. And uh -huh. perhaps a different species altogether. So that's him on the yeah. left <laughs> in the middle is Thundar, the barbarian to the right's Ariel. So your thoughts on Gen X, um, videos, uh, cartoons that came up uh, during my day, Caleb. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, you're talking to two totally different generations from you, Dave. So <laughs> we're getting a little closer. Uh, there, I tried um, to pull him up. Ookla, Eddie. Yeah, the front looks like Kim from Street Fighter. Um, so when it comes to going against a, a seven foot one type of guy like he is, and I know Adu's six uh, eleven, uh, Caleb. It's not the size in terms of height; it's the mass. I mean, this guy. Edie has an an NBA body like today. He just doesn't have the NBA style as of today. So maybe the NBA body of 20 years ago. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of, do you guys remember the early 2000s when Kevin Garnett was in Minnesota and Tim Duncan was like at his peak in San Antonio? And there was actually for a while a debate over who was the better player. The problem with Garnett was that whenever he would try to post up Tim Duncan, Duncan had about you know, Garnett would always have to do that fadeaway because he couldn't back him down under the basket because he was so skinny, even though he was yeah. finesse and athletic. Um, I don't think Jonas Adu is Kevin Garnett. I don't think Zach Eadie's Tim Duncan. I'm not going there, guy. You know, but like, I'm not, I don't think that's a huge stretch that Edie Duncan comparison. I think Edie would be a very 
poor man's version, John, of Tim Duncan. I don't hate that comparison by Caleb. No, I remember watching uh, Duncan, and I think he played at Wake Forest as a freshman in, in the NCAA tournament. Uh, yeah, he had, obviously, he, he was a superstar. But but I really like Edie. Uh, I liked him because I, I don't think I watched an entire Purdue game. I've watched parts of games, and I saw him last year, too. We saw him against Tennessee, I should say, also this year. But I was just really impressed with him in that second round game. Um, for one thing, he makes his free throws. I think he had an off game uh, in first round game. But for the most part, a, a lot of big guys just never master that. Uh, it, yeah, he looks like somebody who is really big that has really worked on his game. I don't think he's naturally athletic like some of these seven footers you see. But he's seven four, and he just looks like he's really gotten the most out of his ability. So I, I kind of like watching him play. Now, I kind of do too. It's, it's very old school. I, I bet Caleb hates it and thinks that they need to make sure and not punt when the ball's on their own no, side. I, yeah, I, I don't hate old school. First of all, I was, I'm a hardcore Grizzly fan, and when we had Mark Gasol and Zach Randolph, we were playing old school basketball while the rest of the team was spreading it out. If we had just gotten a shooter, we could have won a title, but. Yeah, it's funny you, you guys say that. Though. Away Kobe at one point. We, we never had Kobe. No, uh, that's the Hornets. Kobe. Very similar. Hornets, yeah. yeah. But uh, what I was going to laugh at was that it's funny you brought that up because when you think about styles of play and thinking that painter, I mean, guys, is he just? A, you brought up Tim Duncan at Wake Forest. Is he just a modern day Dave Odom? <laughs> <laughs> I thought uh, you were going to give him a uh, modern day the head coach for the Spurs, which would be because he's not because no, because Pavlovich has titles. Matt Painter has had a history of flaming <laughs> out of the tournament. Dave Odom had John remembers this because he said he remembers watching Tim at Wake Forest. Dave Odom had two NBA centers Tim Duncan senior year and got bounced out in the first round. Lauren Woods and Tim Duncan, and he didn't realize that you should maybe play both of them. Yeah. I I also remember it. I guess it was an. This was Wake Forest in 1993. Played Kentucky in the NCAA tournament. I think it was an either Elite Eight or Sweet Six or Elite Eight or, or Sweet Sixteen game, and it was a very talented team. And Kentucky was out on them like 34 to 10 to start the game. Pretty much over. It's on our uh, poll question. Tennessee's chances of winning the national title is blank, realistic, blank, unlikely, blank, still a long shot. John's appearance is brought to you by our good friend at Ray Varner Ford. Check them out. Ray Varner Ford in Clinton. You'll be treated like uh, one of the family. And you'll also be treated by a person that you know you can trust for not just years or months, but generations. That's Ray Varner Ford. I speak highly of him. I'm a huge fan right there in Clinton, Tennessee. So tough question to ask, but Caleb, I'm going to lob it at you. If I gave you the option of you can pick the style of player you most want, Edie's going to be pretty far down in the line, right? You're one of, you want a press guard who can push, let's say maybe Derek Rose in his one MVP season. You want a guard who can hit it, or I could have gone Steph Curry and he brings the ball down. You could go a guard uh, and a guy that's just going to shoot it and knock it down like Ray Allen. You go three swing man like Jason Tatum. I could go on and on and on, but not necessarily the person you would want, but where does a back-to-his-back defensive center rank in the type of player you want when you start Caleb's basketball club? Not as high as a center who can pull away, who can pull away from underneath the basket. Um, because I think I'm wondering think, where a center even ranks for you all together. Like I would take a a swing man, Dalton connect over any of the, the, the positions I mentioned. Well, you know, wings are kind of interesting because like the wing, you know, and LeBron started this and then Kevin Durant, Carmelo. I mean, we can just go down the list. Kawhi Leonard when he's healthy, there's been like a whole, you know, change of like wing players really being the heart and soul of a team. The problem when you have a wing player is like, you never know how to build around them. Do I go for a more effective backcourt? Do I go for a front court? And that's made it tricky to actually construct a team around. I think Dalton Connect, this team is constructed well around him. 
but it gets it, it requires good coaching to know actually how to use wings properly which Tennessee has in Rick Barnes, which is why Dalton connect. I would have Dalton. I'd rather have Dalton connect with Rick Barnes, honestly, than Zach Eady with Purdue. Because again, if Jonas Ada was hitting that 15 foot floater, guys, Zach Eady can't do anything. Zach Eady can't leave the, the, the paint. I mean, he really can't. No, he can't. And that's, that's a, that's going to be a big problem. If Ada was just hitting the mid range shot at that point. I mentioned to you earlier, uh, portions of the program are brought to you by Hemp House, the premier hemp dispensary online with a wide variety, great selection, and strict standards to ensure you only receive the best in CBD or Delta products. Hemp House Chat with 2Ts.com. Hemp House Chat with 2Ts.com. John's appearance is always brought to you by Newbert Collision Center. For over 50 years, Newbert Collision Center, as he's been East Tennessee's best choice for quality repair work and fantastic customer service. Jones, Newbert Collision.com jones collision.com so if i give you the physical makeup and the play style of any any sort of player who are you picking first to bring out the adams the university of adams athletics uh, i didn't think i'd be answering that question today um i would uh no i like i like teams that can shoot i like a wide open game fast paced game jacking up threes Run and gun, that kind of team. Do you want Allen Iverson? Allen uh, Iverson can't shoot threes. Well, I know he can't I, shoot I didn't threes. say I wanted out. No, no, no. I can't. I know no, I want shoot threes. I want Hold Curry. On. Okay. I, I know he can't shoot threes, but he more, be, would be more up and down. My argument with John, because maybe I thought he was going to go Curry, is I don't think Curry gets as many open looks because if he were on another team, I think he gets a lot more open looks because of the team he's on with. I know Clay Thompson's not the same, but would you argue that, John? Well, I mean, I think he gets when I watch him, he gets a lot of open looks. But he's pretty good. He's got the he's got the the crotch knocker down there. Uh, he's the mentally softest player in the NBA, Clay Thompson. He's very easy to. Uh, Clay to Thompson or Steph Curry? Clay Thompson. Steph okay. Curry's not clutch, by the way. Honestly. Steph Curry, I, I just to go. I'd rather have Dalton connect shoot the game winning three than Steph Curry any day, every day of the week. Steph Curry, look at his stats in the playoffs. He's horrible on game winners. I would rather have. <laughs> How did they win clients. championships? I don't know because they because the have... never was necessary because they were so dominant. It wasn't ever close. 